There we go. All right, there we are. We are live. Yay. I don't see anyone watching yet. Imagine that. say is it something I said oh four <laughs> let me know how the audio sounds if someone could fire a comment out there that lets me know if you can hear what I'm saying or not all uh, input and constructive criticism is appreciated this evening comments yet does that mean oh there we go thanks Jamie sounds good thanks for tuning in appreciate it Sean that's awesome we'll hold off a, a few minutes and let some folks gather in beautiful beautiful evening in and around Devil's Lake not on Devil's Lake unless you're a polar bear or a penguin maybe be a good night just a couple more minutes and go ahead and get fired up make sure to tell all your friends send out a, a share and a like and all that good stuff I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering what's going on at Devil's Lake we got plenty of time tonight hope you have a lot of questions we'll talk fishing boating ice out what to expect, the health of the lake. Jay Hagen is driving me around tonight so I don't have to film, record, and drive all at once. You tend to take a little grief for that on the internet nowadays if you're doing anything you shouldn't be. So we wanted to make sure that it was safe. Maybe Jay will be able to help me with uh, last fall's creel or net surveys because I think the numbers were fairly impressive. I can't believe they were all above average. Yes. All right. Well, it's 701. We've got 20 people on. I'm sure some more will jump on. Welcome to the first of uh, six live Devil's Lake, North Dakota fishing seminars. And if I'm not staring right at the camera, it's because I'm trying to uh, keep an eye on about the 20 anglers here along the shoreline and if I see someone hooked up with a fish I want to grab the grab the phone and show everybody what's going on but here we are it's May the 3rd uh, 2023 and looking out at the lake right now you'd never guess that it was May the 3rd uh, pretty late ice out this year uh, I have no idea what the Devil's Lake average is when you ask people what the average is it seems as though no one that I can find keeps track of anything like that but personally I'm gonna say most years I've got my boat in Devil's Lake before May 1st most years I don't know Jay what do you think I'd say yeah. most most years the earliest I can remember ever is the last week of March uh, caught some walleye and northern pike fairly well the last week of March from a boat and that was about a decade ago it's 2012 2012 because Jay was along with me we were actually teaching one of my Lake Region State College fishing classes that year and the latest ice out I can remember is right around May the 10th and I'm gonna guess this year might beat that and I don't know if beat that is a good thing or not uh, real quick like here I'll show you what I'm looking at. I am 
at the Mave Cooley Bridge on Highway 19. And here is what we can see. We got some folks down there fishing. Uh, there is, you know, I don't know, that's, that looks like about a quarter mile of open water out there. Um, but no way you could get a boat here. And as you look down the shoreline, you can see the anglers fishing. They're plugging away. They're doing all they can. And uh, I'm sure someone will catch one or two somewhere before the night's over out there. I can actually see a stringer in the water flopping around right near the bridge on what I would call the sweet spot. But uh, So let's talk about the lake's conditions right now. Today I drove by the main or East Bay, East Bay and the uh, car that parked out there had fallen through sometime between 4 and 5 o'clock this afternoon. So based on past experience, once that car goes through, it's a week to 10 days before usually all the ice is gone. Uh, the Lake Region Anglers have said this year they're not putting any boat docks in until the lake is ice free completely. Don't want to take any chances of docks getting damaged or anything like that. Uh, so it's going to be a while. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for May the 14th because I have a guide trip on May the 15th. So I'm going to be really, really selfish and say the ice will be out May the 14th. Uh, who knows what's going to happen between now and then. And uh, I'm going to have Jay start driving us to the next spot. I'll keep talking while we're driving down the highway. Uh, but uh, as far as fishing right now goes, if you know anything at all about Devil's Lake, North Dakota, you know that we're world famous for this early season shore fishing bonanza and it is it is going it is going uh, like i said there's a couple folks down here with a stringer they got some fish uh dangling off the stringer didn't see anyone catch while we were there for five or ten minutes we were there but i'm sure they are uh the further north and west you get from devil's lake the better the fishing has been all the way up to Candu. i've heard the uh, reports are very very good in the coolies, uh, it is shoulder to shoulder fishing on a nice sunny calm day or on the weekend it's 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 uh combat fishing at its finest but it can be really good those uh that work hard at it take a pair of waders they'll uh, try to get away from the crowds wade out into the the marshy areas get to the right to the edge of the coolies and cast around and they're doing very very well uh, the further away you get from a crowd, the better you get. Our good buddy Carson Schlenk over uh, East Grand Forks, young man that's uh, about as ambitious as I was when I was that age, I suppose, loves to get after it. He sent me some great pictures uh, over the weekend. They did pretty well. One thing about this bite, folks, is it is a lot of big fish. And I'm not on here to argue about what is the best conservation practice and what isn't. I'm gonna ask everyone to make their own judgment calls there. Just make sure you can sleep at night. That's all I ask is uh, that you be mindful of the resource. Uh, when these fish are grouped up, uh, it's really easy to get your five and maybe be tempted to get five more. That's not a good thing. It's really tempted to take five fish that would make a nice wall mount of a lifetime home and eat them for dinner and I suppose if you've got a family to feed and all that kind of thing I'm not going to judge anyone over that but uh, man just just be mindful of the resource and let's not abuse it let's enjoy it let's let other people enjoy it and all that good stuff so how are these folks catching them well right now and even after the ice goes out here in a week or so the bait of choice for me is this right here. It's uh, pretty simple. A quarter ounce jig and a white paddle tail. It's really, really hard to beat that. This is a Shields Pro Swimmer right here. That's a 3.3 inch. I like the 3.8 inch as well. Two great sizes. They make a smaller, a 2.8, and they make a larger, four and a half, I believe. But the two and the three inch range are money. Uh, this bait works really, really well. White, great color. 
if I had to go with a second choice, it would be this Berkeley Ripple Shad right here. And if I had to go with a second color, it would be that Fire Tiger right there. That's a three and a half inch. That is also the size that I would prefer. It just appeals to more sizes of fish. And if and when the lake opens up and the water gets clean, and you want something a little more subtle, I like to throw this bee fishing tackle. Oh, it's a moxie minnow, I believe they call this. It's got that nice curl tail. That color works okay in dirtier water, but uh, the thing I like about these is you don't have to move them very fast to get a lot of action out of that tail. Those are probably my three favorite shapes. Again, colors, really, really hard to lose with white. Uh, when you have a white bait out there, man, you catch everything. Walleye, northern pike, white bass. Fire tiger, when the water gets a little dirty. I like to throw mine on super line. Uh, we're gonna use a 10 pound Berkeley fire line, maybe a 15 pound spider wire stealth, uh, some other kind of braid. Uh, anything you, you wanna throw it on with no stretch, thin diameter. Put about a two foot liter of fluorocarbon Early in the spring, I'll go fairly heavy, 15 to 20 pound test, maybe even more on that fluorocarbon. It just helps with the pike bite offs. The water's usually a little dirtier and uh, the walleye don't seem to be affected by it. But uh, that fluorocarbon really helps, gives you a little shock in there too. I'll throw it on a seven foot medium power fast action rod, size 30 spinning reel and, and have at her. We're pulling up here now to the six mile bay bridge it's not looking as promising here, not near as much traffic. Uh, that can mean one of two things. If you're looking for a fishing spot, it's gonna be less crowded here. Uh, but what my head tells me is they're catching more fish at Mavic Cooley because there's more guys fishing there. Uh, usually if there's people fishing at a bridge, that's because they're catching at a bridge. I'll uh, pick the phone up here when we get stopped and I'll show you what Six Mile Bay looks like we're gonna be looking at the south side. Uh, I can show you both sides, actually. I'll show you the south side of the lake first. Let me grab this out of here, and we'll turn it around. Here we go, here's uh, Six Mile Bay from the south side of the lake. We're, we're looking to the south. Uh, man, you could not get to the boat ramp, which is over that way, you can see. Uh, there is some scattered open water here. And then right in front of the bridge, it's wide open in front of the bridge. Uh, but man, only one vehicle here. So again, if you want to fish without a crowd, I would say you could come to Six Mile Bay. But uh, probably not much happening. And then there is the north side. I'll zoom in a little bit here. There's the north side of the Highway 19. And that's pretty iced up. Now, I did go for a drive just the other day and I posted it on my Facebook page. Uh, channel A is wide open. There's a lot of fishing opportunity up at uh, Channel A right now. Go ahead, Jay, we'll keep hauling around. We'll get down to Highway 57, Highway 20. I can talk while we're driving. Uh, Channel A is wide open, the Mave Cooley at Church's Ferry, wide open, lots of fishing opportunities there. Again, if you wanna put a pair of waders on, get off the beaten path and do a little walking around, you'd have even uh, better fishing opportunities that way. But uh, what can we expect? Well, let's talk about what Game and Fish said we can expect. If I remember correctly, last fall, when the Game and Fish spoke to the Lake Region Anglers Association. I'm gonna summarize, more walleye in Devil's Lake than there ever has been. I think that's probably the best way to say it. There are more walleye swimming in Devil's Lake right now than there ever has been before. And that's absolutely incredible news for us as anglers. Uh, it gets me excited. The next number that I remember is that 50% or more of those walleye in the lake are between 14 and 20 inches long. 
So that means every other fish you catch, in theory, should be a keeper walleye. That's pretty good news too. So instead of having to catch six to keep one, we might be able to actually expect two to keep one. That's good news. Lots of fish coming up behind them. That's also great news. We like to see those year classes coming along. And the number of fish over 20 inches is above the long-term average as well. Again, summary, expect the, some of the best fishing we've had in a long time just based on numbers of fish. Now, granted, weather, all that kind of stuff uh, will play a part in what happens. The fish, just because there's a lot of fish in Devil's Lake doesn't mean they're all going to bite. Uh, we all have been there. Who knows what's going to happen this spring when this ice comes off. So let's talk about what do we do when the ice comes off. Now that we know there's a lot of fish, where do we start? Well, it takes a little time for the water to warm up. And I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say I'm guilty of probably fishing shallow way too soon. Now, if the walleye spawn is still going on when the ice comes off, then yes, there will be shallow fish to catch. Don't get me wrong. But I'm guessing most of the spawning activity with ice still on the main lake is going to happen farther away from Devil's Lake than in Devil's Lake proper. So we'll probably miss out on that spawning bite in Devil's Lake. Most of us like to run to the back shallow bays right away. This year, I'm gonna try to resist that urge, maybe for the first week. I think you should probably go to your last best ice fishing spots. Now, I'm kind of in a jam there personally because I don't have ice fishing spots. As most of you know that follow me around, I spent my winter in Florida, so uh, I will beg, borrow, and steal ice fishing spots from anybody listening that would uh, like to share a few ice fishing spots. But I'm gonna start in that middle to deeper range on rocks, probably vertically jigging, maybe some jigging wraps, some ice fishing type spoons, a jig and a minnow. Uh, if you can find minnows, we'll talk about that a little bit as well tonight. Uh, a jig and a leech, if there's leeches available. I know the ice just went off in Minnesota, so trappers should be able to get some bait here shortly. But I'm gonna say 15 to 25 feet of water, maybe even that old lake shoreline right away, just to see what hasn't moved shallow yet. When that water starts flirting with the 50 degree mark, that's when I like to go to the shallow base. I'll boogie to the to the bigger, flatter, dark bottom bays, uh, Howard's Farm, uh, New Mill Bay, Penny Bay. Uh, those are some of the more well-known ones. Everybody else seems to have their own favorites. And even the entire part of Pelican Lake, that's a big shallow bay, a lot of dark bottom there, a lot of shallow weed that absorbs water and absorbs heat, warms the water quickly, um, shallow flooded brush and timber that absorbs the sun and warms the water quicker. That 50 degree number seems to be magic uh, for holding bait fish and then the walleye. So that's what I'm gonna look for first, a little bit deeper as the water warms. I'm gonna run back in the bays and that's when the casting thing starts. The jigs that I showed earlier, shallow diving crankbaits like a shallow shad wrap, a shallow flicker shad, uh, a husky jerk, uh, the Berkeley cutters, X wraps, uh, let's see, what else? Hit sticks, right? That's a new one that might be hot this year. Uh, maybe the Escos, Grapple of Escos, the shallow frenzies, anything uh, that doesn't dive much more than I'd say five feet or so is going to be a pretty good bet. Uh, I'm going to work shallow, rocky, gravelly areas. Uh, again, I'm going to look for brush, I'm going to look for weeds, I'm going to look for sand. Uh, but quite honestly, you never know what section of shoreline is going to hold the next group of walleye. I like to rely a lot on my side imaging here. I like to use my 360 a lot when I'm pitching shallow. Uh, you're going to start hearing more and more and more about folks using 
live sonar when they're up there that shallow because now the technology allows us to scan around in that shallow water and actually know if those fish are up there or not. So uh, it's easier said than done to say don't fish till you see them, uh, but if you have the right technology, you're going to see those fish up shallow. Uh, who knows what the water is going to be like when uh, when the ice finally goes off. One of the things that we struggle with other than water temperature is water clarity. A lot of times you'll find that perfect water temperature, but you can read the Sunday Fargo Forum laying on the bottom of the lake in eight feet of water because the water is so clear. That makes catching them tough. When you look over the side of the boat and you can see white tips of tails swimming away from you at Mach 3, like you're watching the latest Top Gun movie, uh, that makes them really, really hard to get close to and catch. So I like to look for a little bit of stained water. Now normally, that stained water is going to be closer to where the runoff is coming into the lake. So the north end of Six Mile Bay can be really, really good. Uh, the Mabe Coulee can be really, really good. The Jerusalem Coulee over in uh, East Devils Lake. I think people forget about that. Uh, Brown Slough in East Devils Lake. There's some water that comes in from the north there as well. Uh, so look for some of those places, but also use the wind to your advantage. Play that windy shoreline. You want the wind blowing in to the shore and uh, that will dirty up the water and put things in our advantage a little bit there. Other than that, uh, I've got some numbers here that may be of interest to those of you listening. We've got uh, the water levels from the Devil's Lake Joint Water Resource Board, I believe is what it's called. As of today, the lake level was 1,450.2 feet above mean sea level. So 1450.2. Um, that's not a bad number. It's not near what I expected it to be this spring. On April 3rd, it was 1449.50. So it's only up 0.7 feet in the last 30 days. That's, uh, that's not as encouraging as I would have liked it to be. Uh, I guess it depends what side of the coin you're looking at there, yeah. whether that's encouraging or not. There's a lot of farm guys right now that think that's awesome, but I think most of us as anglers would have liked to see another half a foot, maybe by now, or a foot. And folks, I'm not a, a geological expert, definitely not a weatherman, although I think I can do just as good as any other weatherman out there. But uh, I don't see another half a foot coming. I really don't. Jay, I don't know about you, but no snow. there's no snow left on the ground other than where the largest piles were. Now, granted, it takes a while for those coolies to empty out and settle down. So, yes, there is still some water coming, but it is not coming as fast and as hard as uh, I would have expected it to after all of the rain or the snow, I'm sorry, that we had this last winter. Now, possibly could get some rain this spring and get things fired up a little bit and get a little bit more water. But as of right now, it's, uh, it's probably not looking all that good. I will put out there, uh, oh, let's see. Chris Augustin says that the Candu Hydrograph is going down. So Augie, thank you very much for that information. And uh, I think that kind of confirms my hunch that uh, the runoff is has peaked. It's going to start falling. Uh, that means a couple things, right? The lake's not going to come up as high as we might have thought. And it also means that uh, that walleye run, that activity might slow down. Those fish may not uh, have the urge to go upstream quite as much with less current. I think they sense when that current slows down and they're going to do their business and uh, turn around and head back this way. So uh, I'm going to pick the phone up here and switch our view. We are now going past where the car 
used to be on the ice right out there, no car. This is East Bay from Highway 57, if you can see. And a lot of ice. Lot of ice. Uh, granted, it doesn't look good. It's not what I would call good ice. It's crystallized. It, you would not hold a human being, I do not believe. But there's a lot of ice that has to go away still before anybody's going to be putting a boat in out there. Camp Grafton is right here just to give you a little bit of a idea of where we're at coming up upon two more of the famous or infamous bridges if you drive by those at the right time you're really likely to see that uh, big wrapped amped outdoors lund parked underneath one of them especially early i've had some pretty good days right when the ice goes off under either one of the Highway 20 or the Highway 57 bridges. We've got this uh, little bay right here off of Camp Grafton. I remember when my friend Jay Hagen fished an old uh, FLW tournament inside that bay. Yeah. Right there. I don't know if there's any fish in it yet or not. Or left in it. Sealed off. It's all sealed off. And then here is the main lake. And folks, that's not even turning black yet. That's still white out there. Still white out there. So it's going to be a little bit. Again, fishing right now, though, lots of opportunity from shore. Any one of these bridges can have a fish under it at any time. Could be a big fish under it. There's been a lot of 30-inch uh, walleye caught under these bridges over the years. in here. I'll go ahead and open it up to questions. I don't have a whole lot more to ramble on and on and on about, so uh, there's got to be somebody in the 28 people watching that are dying to know something, anything. Fire away at will. We're here to chit-chat. We're here to talk. Well, there's 100 yards or so of water here at the bridge. There's some open water at the Casino Bridge, I think it's affectionately called. Not a lot, but some. Jay's going to spin the truck around here. But yeah, all white to the west. And Mission Bay is frozen over for the most part. But when we spin around, we have got a nice open spot there's right steps to walk down there yeah that's another good point jay um was it last year jay or two years, two years ago. ago two years ago the lake region anglers worked with uh the city of devil's lake and devil's lake tourism and got these nice steps put in to go down to the water right by the highway 57 bridge and uh if you like to shoot diver ducks and and uh, want to take a chance. There's a lot of them out there. I'm just kidding. It's not in season. Do not shoot the diver ducks. It's not a good idea. But uh, there's quite a bit of water here. Jay, I suppose if you had a canoe or a kayak and really wanted to get after it, you could uh, push it right down those steps and slide her, slide her out there. Got a nice sandy beach here. You can get out there, but a lot of water there. What is the latest ice out you have seen? Scott Corvana asked me that question. Um, Scott, I've never written it down. Um, I'm going to say probably May 12th, 13th, somewhere in there. I've never seen it later than the middle of the month. I know that. My birthday is May 24th, and normally I have a sunburn by my birthday. Uh, hopefully this year things accelerate. As much as I hate to ask for it, right now a lot of wind and rain would be a, my best friend. Just bust this stuff up, push it all, all around. What about Penny Bay? Yeah, I see. Uh, what about Penny Bay in the spring? 
Uh, Penny Bay in the spring used to be one of my go-to spots. Uh, I would say 10, 12, 15 years ago, I fished Penny Bay a lot. That was before any of us really knew what was going on north and west. Pelican Lake was kind of a scary place. No mapping, all that kind of stuff. So I stayed away from the northwest part of the lake. But man, don't tell me those fish that I used to catch in Penny Bay every spring all left. They're still over there. I know the folks that camp, uh, Hay Bale Heights, uh, some of the other campgrounds on the main lake, Ackerman's Acres, there's a big, Woods. big, big contingency. The folks from Woods Rutten, Bill Woods Campground, East Bay, there's a huge contingency of people that love to fish Penny Bay in the spring. So yeah, get in there, tear it up, it warms quick, it's nice and shallow. Let's see, I saw some other comments. Sherry Hatton can't wait to get in the boat fishing again. You and me both. Wood Lake. Uh, Wood Lake. Wood Lake. I'm not supposed to talk about Wood Lake. People get mad at me when I talk about Wood Lake because that's supposed to be a best kept little secret, Amy. But I truly enjoy fishing Wood Lake. Wood Lake usually opens up a little bit ahead of Devil's Lake. It's much, much smaller so the ice is going to go off soon. Uh, there is an improved boat ramp at Wood Lake, but there is no boat dock. So that makes it really challenging. You better have a tall pair of boots or a good friend that doesn't mind getting wet feet if you want to, if you want to launch a boat there. Uh, and a lot of folks think Wood Lake is all about the bass, and it is. Don't get me wrong, but I've caught some really, really nice early season walleye in Wood Lake in the past. Uh, so yeah, for those of you that don't know, Wood Lake is southeast of Devil's Lake near the town of Tokyo, North Dakota. Uh, look it up on uh, Google Earth or on Google Maps. Uh, you'll be able to find your way there. The boat ramp, I believe, is on the west end. West, north, northwest, west, northwest corner of the lake. Uh, but no, fun, fun place to go, especially when the wind's blowing. And uh, the only muskie I've ever landed in my life fishing at age 53 years old came out of Wood Lake. There's a pretty good muskie population in there. So uh, go over there and check that out. Probably have a little bit of fun. Uh, the Highway 20 bridge we're coming up on right now one truck here is all. So based on angling pressure, the Mave Cooley Bridge must have the most fish. It's not always the case, but I'm gonna say that uh, based on angling pressure right now, if you're gonna spend some time at a bridge, probably wanna spend some time at the Mave Cooley Bridge. As soon as we get spun around here, I'll flip the camera around again, and I will show everybody what we've got going on the, uh, oh, we're bow fishing. Yeah. This is kind of cool. This is really cool. Northern pike, looking for pike, maybe. I like that. This is awesome. This is really cool. That's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? How cool would it be to watch this young lady spear one? That would be cool. Awesome. So anyways, here we are. Uh, there's quite a bit of open water at the bridge here. Again, if you had a kayak or a canoe, a very small boat, you could push it down over the shore. Looks like there's some current out there. If you can see the ripples, uh, that's probably where I'd focus most of my attention if I was casting or could get a little boat out there and drift around. But all these bridges can hold, all these bridges can hold fish. So let's see, any more questions? Melody can't wait to get here from Iowa. Melody, I can't wait for everybody to get here because it'll be a lot of fun. But uh, we're just hanging out here, doing a live, doing a live uh, 
seminar. We're just getting ready to wrap things up. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Uh, we'll just go uh, okay. We're doing, we're doing a live seminar. Well, if there's no questions, uh, I'm going to wrap things up and let everybody take off. Thanks for tuning in. We'll do another one of these on uh, the first Wednesday of June. Uh, again, this will go to the YouTube channel on the Devil's Lake ND uh, Tourism YouTube site. It'll be up on my Facebook page. It'll be on the Devil's Lake Visitors uh, Facebook page as well. You can watch it. Share it with your friends. Send it around. If you have any questions, reach out to me uh, on my Facebook page, Johnny Candle Professional Angler. Comment on any of these posts. I'll check them the, for the next couple days and answer questions. Or visit my website, johnnycandle.com, and contact me via Facebook or any of those. Oh, how do you pay the Fisherman Association fee? I'm uh, assuming you're talking about the Lake Region Anglers Association. You can go to www.laraa.com. Oh, LakeRegionAnglers.com. I'm sorry, LakeRegionAnglers.com, and click on the membership link and sign up right there. So yeah, that's a great idea, Melody. Thank you for bringing that up. The Lake Region Anglers do a great job uh, in the Lake Region, helping with lake access projects, keeping boat ramps clean and and docks ready to go, fish cleaning stations up and running. So yes, LakeRegionAnglers.com. Click the membership link and uh, sign up. And we do take credit cards via PayPal right online. So once again, thanks everyone for listening. I'm going to sign off and uh, we'll keep in touch over the summer. Have a great night.